Welcome to part three of our uh, lecture on the innate immune system. And in this part, we'll be talking about the different cells associated with um, the immune system. Now, notice here on this drawing, we have what are called hematopoietic stem cells. Hematopoietic stem cells are stem cells that are semi-differentiated. They are found in bone marrow and uh, they are semi-differentiated to become any blood cell in the body. They they can only become a blood cell, but they can become any blood cell uh, in the body. So all blood cells, all part cells within the circulatory system uh, are found, are initiated or developed in the bone marrow. Now, these hematopoietic stem cells are self-renewing. So these are sometimes also known, you may have heard of the term adult stem cells. So these are adult stem cells. And these cells can self-renew, and when they divide, when they go through mitosis, one of them will become a progenitor cell, and the other one will remain a hematopoietic stem cell. These guys self-renew themselves, uh, particularly the hematopoietics, because we have to produce blood cells our entire lives. Now, when they differentiate into progenitors, they, can be, they become one of two different types. They can become what's known as a myeloid progenitor, or they can become a lymphoid progenitor. Myeloid progenitors are the cells we see most often in circulation, and lymphoid progenitors are those cells that hang out in the lymph nodes until they are activated. The myeloid progenitors eventually, we don't, you don't need to remember all of these, but they will eventually become the red blood cells, platelets, mast cells, your granulocytes, and then the monocytes um, and their immature form, which eventually will mature or be activated to become a macrophage or dendritic cell. And now um, your lymphoids become your natural killer cells, your T cells, and your B cells. So let's take a look at what these different cells do. Now in the myeloid progenitor cells, we have first off the granulocytes. And the granulocytes are the basophils, eosinophils, and neutrophils. Mast cells are sometimes associated with gran granulocytes and sometimes they are not. Now the mast cell can, counts for um, quite a bit, about one per the, I'm sorry, the basophil, excuse me, the basophil accounts for a little over 1% of the blood, um, of the white cells found in blood. It has a bilobular nu nucleus um, and uh, it has granules within its cytoplasm. It first is attracted through a process in the immune system called chemotaxis, and it will recognize a target, and uh, this is due to IgE molecules on its surface. So these um, basophils actually have antibodies attached to them uh, like this, and these antibodies are specific for, uh, uh, antibodies are specific for an antigen. So these basophils, will have uh, their surface covered with all these different antibodies. When they um, are bound by these antibodies, basophils are associated with uh, allergic reactions, and they will release their granules and their granules will contain histamine. That histamine is released out into the bloodstream and will react um, as part of the inflammatory response. They increase uh, uh, mucus secretion, uh, they uh, increase a smooth muscle contraction, that sort of thing. Now, eosinophils are also found in peripheral blood. They are also um, another granulocyte. Uh, they have cytoplasmic granules that are a little bit smaller in size, but these granules also will release um, histamines. And eosinophils are highly associated. They are phagocytic. You can see here they do have phagocytosis, and they also will have receptors on their surface, similar to a basophil. They function in a very similar manner. But eosinophils are highly associated with um, uh, production of uh, production of chemokines that are associated with smooth muscle uh, contraction. I think, believe they're called leukotrienes. So chemokines and leukotrienes. We'll study these more, these particular uh, responses more in our hypersensitivity uh, reactions. But for right now, these granules, and they will uh, release their granules of histamines and produce chemokines and leukotrienes which are towards smooth muscle contraction. And this is why eosinophils are highly associated with allergic reactions. 
uh, so allergies and uh, in particular asthma. You may have heard of eosinophilic asthma. And this is an excess of eosinophils found in the lower lobes of the lung and it promotes um, inflammation, mucus secretion, fluid secretion, and uh, smooth muscle contraction. Neutrophils um, are the most common white blood cell found in circulation. They do have cytoplasmic granules that release some toxins and some chemokines for attraction of antigens. They go directly to the site of infection. They are the most phagocytic cells in the body, um, super, super highly phagocytic. Uh, they consume and break down uh, uh, pathogens as, uh, as quickly as they possibly can, and they're quite aggressive. Other my, uh, myeloid cells include the mononuclear phagocytes, which are uh, monocytes, and our uh, mast cells. Mast cells are found in mucosal tissue and in connective tissue, not so much in circulation. They have two different, they have a bilobular um, um, uh, nucleus, but they're kind of like two different types. They have um, a really big nucleus and then they um, have a little bit of a smaller one. They have very large granules and they are, will mature in tissue. So they will leave the, and they will leave the circulatory system and move into tissue in an immature state and then eventually become mature within tissue. They also will have uh, antibodies bound to their surface. They are highly involved in um, uh, allergic reactions and also in some parasitic reactions. Uh, mac uh, basophils are also uh, increase in concentration in parasitic reactions. They recognize their target their target through a process of cross-linking like we saw with the basophils and eosinophils, and they will degranulate. Now, monocytes are found in peripheral blood, so they're found in circulation, but they're immature. Uh, these are immature cells in circulation, and they um, do have some, they do release compounds for uh, chemotaxis, so they release what are called chemokines, and they are phagocytic. However, they mature first, and if they remain in circulation after maturation, they become a dendritic cell. If they um, move into the um, tissue, if they move into tissue, then they are a macrophage. So monocytes, when they mature, become either a dendritic cell or a macrophage. Which one they become will be dependent on what cytokines, what chemical signals the other parts of the immune system are sending at the site of infection. Now, dendritic cells and macrophages are what we call antigen presenting cells or APCs. These guys are highly phagocytic. That's their primary job. They will phagocytize antigens and then particularly dendritic cells, these are the important ones, uh, dendritic cells, they will actually go into lymphatic tissue and present antigen. Uh, macrophages will do this as well, but once antigen presentation takes place, macrophages really concentrate more on becoming a super macrophage and moving into uh, digestion and phagocytosis, whereas dendritic cells will continue to present and cause activation of the adaptive immune responses. Lymphoid progenitors include the B cells, natural killer cells, and the T cells in general. And T cells come in two basic shapes. We have CD4 T cells and CD8. There are multitudes of other classes of T cells, but these are the two classes of T cells that we will be most, um, that we will be concentrating on here in our class. Now, B cells are antibody producing cells. They are found in the lymph nodes and they are antibody producing and they are also phagocytic. Now think about the lymphatic system itself. Uh, the lymphatic system has primary and secondary lymphoid organs. The primary uh, lymphoid organs are the lymph nodes. And that is where all three of these different cell types are gonna come from. Uh, now, they are initially produced in the bone marrow, and then from the bone marrow, they will move into, um, the B cells will move into the uh, lymph, uh, lymph nodes, and the T cells will go through the thymus and then into the uh, lymph nodes. 
Uh, natural killer cells are produced in bone marrow and they will eventually mature in circulation. Now, lymph nodes are filters. And what's really happening is our lymphatic system runs kind of, is kind of like the back roads of the circulatory system. And lymph nodes uh, carry out lymph. Lymph is the fluid that runs through lymphatic vessels. Lymphatic vessels mirror our circulatory system. And these lymphatic vessels all run to lymph nodes and sitting in the lymph nodes are B cells and T cells. And the B cells literally filter what's going through. So our lymphatic tissue filters our blood. If there are pathogens in the bloodstream floating around in our circulatory system, they will get filtered through the lymph node and they will come into contact with a B cell uh, in the lymph node. Now, helper T cells and killer T cells, um, also known as uh, cytotoxic T cells, are found in the lymph node as well. And B cells will be introduced to an antigen through phagocytosis, whereas T cells will be introduced to an antigen through antigen presentation. Natural killer cells, our last lymphoid cells here, are actually found in circulation. They are part of the um, interferon response and they're gonna take part in viral reactions and in another type of reaction called an ADCC, which we will get to um, in another lecture. So make sure that you know what progenitors, what are the two classes of progenitor cells. Uh, out of all of our different types of lymphoid or myeloid progenitor cells that uh, are the final results, which ones are phagocytic? Uh, where are each of the blood, each of the different types of blood cells most commonly found? What are granulocytes? Um, list the progenitor and lymphoid cells and their primary functions. What's a monocyte? Uh, make sure you understand what happens with a monocyte during the maturation process. And then just a quick little application question about progenitor cells that maybe um, might be a little thought provoking for you. So this was part three, the cells of the immune system, and I will see you guys in part four.